I'm in the process of creating an in-depth tutorial for the project page in Studio One 5.5, but I wanted to take a second to create a shorter video that focuses on three relatively new features that a lot of people have been asking for. Now I'm a little bit tardy to the party because these features came out a few months ago, but it's better late than never. And since so many people had been asking for these, I figured it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and whip something up that covers these three features. So the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the Listen Bus. So if you're using software, a plugin to provide correctioning to your monitors, your studio monitors or your headphones, we used to have to add that to the master bus and be sure that we take that off. So here we have our master, and if you're using software like Sonarworks, that's gonna provide correction to the acoustics in your room through the use of equalization. You had to be sure that you turn that off before you render down your final track. Otherwise that would be printed to your final audio file. But now we have the listen bus and we can access that by clicking here. So by default, this is gonna be set to none. But if we click on none, we can then choose my, I'm currently using Windows Audio because this is what I have to use to capture audio for the tutorials. But I could select this and I'm gonna come back to the master and just set this to none because now we're gonna be monitoring through our listen bus. So in this way, we could insert our plugin that is going to provide the room correction and we don't have to worry about that being printed to our audio when we do our final render. And we'll still be able to hear all of the inserts or post plugins on the listen bus, no problem. To add your room correction plugin, you can just come to the plus to do a search and add it here. And just a quick side note, we actually had the listen bus available to us in the song page. So if you are not familiar with this feature, let's come to the song page really quickly. And here in our mix console, we can right click in an empty space and choose to enable our listen bus. Just take note here. We'll see that that pops up. So if we would like to use this sort of software plugin for room correction for our room or headphones, then we can also use the listen bus to add that here. And in this way, instead of adding it to our main bus, we won't have to worry about powering that on or off when we do our render or bounce down our track if we have it on the listen bus. And then we would just wanna be sure that we choose the speakers that we want to monitor from here in the drop down menu. Again, I'm using the two outputs that I have available to me. And on the main bus, I have this set to none. To remove the listen bus, we can just right click and click on enable listen bus. And that will toggle that back off. Okay, so let's hop back over to the project page. And then next we're gonna take a look at gain envelopes, which is something else that other people were asking for for a while. Now this is gonna function similar to the song page in that we can just come to our track, right click up at the very top, we have gain envelope. I'll click once. We can now see that the, we have this horizontal white line that's become visible and we can click once to add our points. And I'm not saying that this is exactly what you should do when you're working with mastering. So please don't yell at me in the comments. I'm just showing for demonstration purposes. We can then manipulate our points by dragging up or down, moving left or right horizontally. And then when we come to the top, we actually have the trim tool that pops up and we can use that to make adjustments as well. Now I'm gonna control Z to remove these points. But also note that we can come to the center and add curves between our points as well. So we have that clear circle and that's how you know you can add a curve. Okay, let's again undo. And just know that over to the left here, we have the paint tool that's available. We can press two on our QWERTY keyboard or click to activate and again, make some adjustments with the paint tool as well. So I'll press one to come back to the arrow tool and let's control Z, right click on our track and then deactivate that gain envelope. Now the final thing that we'll take a look at is automation. So in the upper left hand corner, this is how we can show our automation or by pressing A on the QWERTY keyboard. So I'll click once and we have two automation tracks 
that we have available. We, now, we can't add our own as we can do in the song page. Beyond what we have available here, we have a track for each individual track that we have in our project. And then we have an automation track for our master channel. So if you're going to be working with automation for your particular tracks, you want to be sure that you have that selected. We can see that I have the night here that's selected. If I click on hard life, we can see that that updates and that tr particular track is highlighted here, selecting break. We can see that that's highlighted and we have these blue borders letting us know that we're going to be working with automation for this specific track. But let's come back to our first one, the night. And in order to add our automation, we can come to the display off here and just select volume. Then we can see we have this horizontal line where we can click to add our points and make adjustments. Add another point here. That's actually for the curve. Okay, hovering, we also have the trim tool available for our automation as well. And again, don't yell at me in the comments. I'm just showing for demonstration purposes. Now we could also make use of the paint tool as well. And we can also use an external controller and add the automation in real time as well. So let's undo all of this here. And let's press one to come back to our arrow tool. And if you take note, if I click on the fader for our listen bus, we can see that this populates up in the upper left hand corner here. But maybe we'd like to add automation to the level for our individual track. So let's click on that. Now we can see we have the night. And then if you have an external controller, you can turn a fader or knob on that device. I have the Personas Atom. So if I turn knob two, we can see that this updates knob three that updates, but I want to assign knob one to the volume for this individual track. So I can now click this arrow and we can see that I have control for the fader for this individual track, the night. So now if I wanted to go ahead and play this back, I can then make my adjustment and we need to change this to latch. Okay, and so we can add it that way with an external controller. After you've made your adjustments, you'll probably want to change this from latch back to read to protect that data that you've written or recorded. And the last thing that I want to men mention about the track automation in particular is that we've got this automation line throughout the other two tracks that are in this project. But if I were to add a point here and a point here and take this level down, now, when I play this back, it's not gonna affect this track at all. And that's because we're specifically working with automation for the night. So don't be confused by this. So let's double click and remove those points. You'll want to be sure that you specifically select hard life up here and then come to the volume. Now, when we click and add our points, add the automation here, we can see that we're working with hard life. When I play back, Okay, we can now hear that that track in particular is being affected. So just be sure that you're working with the correct track when you're working with the automation. Now we can also apply automation to inserts, plugins that we have on our inserts for the individual tracks or our master. So coming back to the night, we can see that I have a pro EQ here. So let's come to the drop down menu here and click on the add remove. Then we have our inserts. If I select, we can see pro EQ. So I can choose low cut and the frequency, slope, active. So all of the different parameters that are available within Pro EQ, we can add automation to those. So selecting that frequency, I can click on add. That's been added here, close. So now that is populated here. If I click on the drop down menu, we can switch between the volume automation for the track the night 
or that one that we recently added for the low cut for the Pro EQ. And then work with the automation as we just saw for the volume. And the same functionality is going to be available for our master track. So switching to our master track, here we have our volume, which we can access there. And let's switch over to our master track to see that we have multiband dynamics. So if we'd like to add automation for inserts that we may have on our master bus, we can again click on the drop down menu, add remove. Here we have our master inserts, and these are the various parameters for our multiband dynamics the low band, the attack, release, gain. I could select, add, close, and now we can see that that's been populated, and we can choose which automation parameter we'd like to work with within the drop down menu. And of course, if you'd like to make these adjustments using an external controller, we can always double click on our multiband dynamics, click on the various parameter or whichever parameter we'd like to adjust. Let's click on the low, low threshold. We can see that that populates here in the upper left hand corner. If I turn knob four, we can see that that populates and we can then connect that. And we're now adjusting the global gain. Let's try that again. Low threshold is not being populated. These, because I'm using the Personas Atom, that may be the issue, but we can see the ratio here. Let's assign that to knob four. Okay, and now we're in business. To undo that connection, we would just click on the triangle again. And now as I turn the knob, it's no longer affecting. So apparently some of these knobs are pre-assigned from the Personas Atom to the various parameters here in Studio One, as I'm not surprised because this is how it is in the song page. Okay, so we will wrap up here. Look forward to the in-depth tutorial on the project page coming soon. And I hope that you gain some useful information with this relatively shorter video. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.